In a display of aerial might unseen since the massive dogfights of World War II, the sky was darkened by the silhouettes of countless Israeli F-15s and F-16s, their path illuminated by E-2 Hawkeye guidance systems, their destination, the Bekaa Valley in southeastern Lebanon, and their formidable objective was to dismantle the intricate web of Soviet surface-to-air missile batteries that shielded Lebanon from aerial onslaughts. The stakes were as high as the soaring aircraft. Never in the annals of warfare had a Soviet SAM network been successfully neutralized by attacking aircraft without significant losses. In previous conflicts, Israeli arrogance had met with humiliation when the Syrian SAM systems shredded through their squadrons. But the winds of change had begun to blow. Equipped with the latest in electronic warfare technology, pioneering military drones, and an intelligence network unparalleled in the Middle East, Israel was poised to rewrite the chronicles of military history. The invading force soon clashed against more than a hundred Syrian fighters in a swarm of metal and thunder. The echoes of this titanic aerial struggle reverberated across the air. Soon, the desert floor became a grim mosaic of fallen warplanes as the brutal and lopsided confrontation reached its unbelievable climax. For decades, Israel had been a nation besieged by its neighbors, caught in a crucible of endless warfare as it struggled to keep control over its territories. By 1980, tensions were reaching an all-time high, this time in the north of Israel, where over 300,000 Palestinian refugees, expelled from Israel, were gathering political and military strength in Lebanon, effectively creating a state within a state. With the Lebanese civil war reaching its peak, violence spread like wildfire across the region. Israel gave its support to Christian and pro-Israel groups in Lebanon, and even trained their militia groups so they could wreak havoc inside the war-torn country. In response, fighters from the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO, launched a series of attacks on Israel, which were met with decisive counterblows. The fragile equilibrium was shattered when mercenaries from the pro-Palestinian Abu Nidal's faction attempted to assassinate Shlomo Argov, Israel's envoy to the United Kingdom. Seizing this moment, Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin cast the PLO as the puppeteer behind this attempt, using this narrative to justify a colossal invasion of southern Lebanon. On June 6, 1982, Israel unleashed a massive military force of 78,000 troops, 800 tanks, 1,500 APCs, and a staggering 634 warplanes to bring Lebanon and the PLO to its knees. But once the Israelis crossed the border, they clashed with a third party who immediately became more involved in the war. Syria, cradling long-held interest in Lebanon and envisioning it as a piece of greater Syria, had watched the unfolding chaos from the wings. Since the eruption of the Lebanese civil war, it had painted itself as the guardian of peace and entered the country in large numbers. Yet, when Israel commenced its relentless onslaught against the PLO in South Lebanon, Syria ripped apart a decades-long ceasefire. In 1973, Israel suffered heavy losses to enemy SAM systems during the Yom Kippur War. The Israeli Air Force, or IAF, failed to effectively deal with anti-aircraft missile batteries from Egypt and Syria, which were provided by the USSR. During the conflict, the IAF lost a total of 102 aircraft, 98 to anti-aircraft missile batteries. Foreshadowing the terrible defeat, three years prior, the IAF faced difficulties when Egyptian SAM batteries were deployed along the Suez Canal, raising concerns about Israel's ability to counter the SAM threat and forcing them to accept unfavorable conditions to end the war of attrition. But now the Israelis were resolute not to be humiliated by the Soviet equipment again. To address the SAM challenge, the IAF engaged in extensive efforts to rebuild and improve its capabilities. The focus was on countering the SA-6 missile and its mobile battery systems, which made it difficult for attacking aircraft to locate and destroy them. The proposed solution involved conducting attacks in a closed circle, with continuous target observation and real-time updates to the attacking aircraft through a control center. This approach relied on advancements in military technology, including precision-guided armament, to enable the process. The IAF established a command center dedicated to attacking SAM batteries, developed an advanced communication network, and enhanced intelligence capabilities to track enemy targets. Besides, unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, were suggested for continuous observation, 
and a dedicated command and control system was created to manage information and update the attack aircraft. In the early 1980s, escalating tensions between Israel and Syria, particularly in Lebanon, led to the deployment of Syrian SAM batteries in the Begah Valley. By the time of the First Lebanon War, the IAF had access to real-time information on target locations and the ability to disrupt enemy communications and destroy SAM batteries from a distance. Suddenly, Lebanon transformed into a horrifying battleground, where Syrians, Israelis, Lebanese, Palestinians, and Christian militants clash in a brutal battle. A terrifying spectacle on a scale the world hadn't witnessed since the end of World War II was about to unfold. On June 9, 1982, the Israeli authorities greenlit Operation Mole Cricket 19, a military campaign aimed at neutralizing missile batteries that posed a threat to the IAF's operational capabilities. This operation showcased a remarkable blend of innovative tactics and cutting-edge technology, incorporating electronic countermeasures, UAVs, and synchronized airstrikes. The operation commenced as Squadron 2000 deployed a variety of UAVs toward the missile batteries, intentionally provoking the Syrians into activating their own missile batteries in response. First, the Israelis launched surface-to-surface -surface missiles. Subsequently, Squadron 105 unleashed approximately 20 Phantom aircraft, strategically targeting the tracking radar of the anti-aircraft batteries to incapacitate them. However, these aircraft positioned themselves outside the range of the anti-aircraft batteries, resorting to air-to-surface missiles for the attack. Phantoms from other squadrons, similarly positioned out of the battery's range, executed subsequent strikes, effectively demolishing the batteries. Throughout the operation, a formidable defense formation comprising F-15 and F-16 interceptors patrolled the airspace. Notably, a Boeing 707 electronic warfare airplane enveloped the entire operation area, shielding it from Syrian radar, while an E-2 Hawkeye controlled and early warning aircraft contributed to situational awareness. Well aware of the daunting capabilities of the IAF, the Syrians abstained from deploying their own air force. Also, they were overconfident in their SAM network, certain it would take care of the attackers, as it had done many times before. Nevertheless, within a mere 20 minutes, 13 missile batteries lay in ruins, with an additional six batteries incapacitated. Then the Syrians retaliated. In a desperate attempt to counter the relentless assault from the Israeli warplanes, Syria finally deployed its air force. About a hundred Syrian fighter aircraft confronted a significantly more technologically advanced adversary, hoping to stem the Israeli offensive. The Israeli warplanes severed the Syrian communication links, utilizing cutting-edge electronic warfare and jamming capabilities. The Syrian jets were left fumbling in the dark, easy prey for the methodical hunt by the Israeli air force. The IAF set reconnaissance units hovering above three major Syrian airfields, tracking the takeoff times and numbers of Syrian aircraft. This information was relayed to their fighters in real time, ensuring the Israelis were always a step ahead, ready to intercept incoming enemy waves. Exploiting the limitations of the Syrian MiGs, which lacked side warning or look up and look down systems, the Israelis struck with precision. Their aircraft, guided by E 2 Hawkeyes, positioned themselves to strike the Syrian aircraft from the sides, where they remained undetected. The Israelis further capitalized on the chaos from their jamming. Syrian controllers were rendered unable to guide their pilots toward the approaching Israeli aircraft. The Israeli planes, equipped with lethal Sparrow missiles capable of Mach 3.5 speeds at ranges of 14 to 25 miles, sat comfortably outside the Syrians' radar and visual range. This enabled them to engage Syrian aircraft at long distances before the Syrians could register the impending threat. In close combat situations, the head-on capabilities of the Israeli sidewinders gave them an unprecedented firepower advantage. The Syrian pilots found themselves blind, outgunned, outnumbered, and demoralized. They were falling from the sky like meteors in a cosmic storm. The aftermath was a spectacle of Syrian humiliation. Over 150 Syrian aircraft were shot down in a single day. Despite the colossal clash involving hundreds of warplanes in aerial combat, the Israeli squadrons remained untouched, not losing a single plane.
Operation Mole Cricket 19 marked a turning point in military history, as it demonstrated the successful use of suppression of enemy air defenses tactics and technology. Some analysts see it as a revolution in military affairs, or a significant change in warfare resulting from the innovative use of new technologies, but also changes in military doctrine, operations, and organization, which fundamentally transform how military operations are conducted. Specialists say such a transformation is suitable for small countries that have an impending motive, an unresolved threatening military problem. And indeed, Mole Cricket was a major military operation that had far-reaching consequences. Not only was it one of the largest air battles after World War II and the Korean War, but it also demonstrated the effectiveness of Western air power against Soviet-built SAM missile systems. This operation challenged the belief that the West could not counter the SAM system, leading to doubts about Soviet capabilities and increased transparency in the Soviet Union, causing surprise and astonishment in the Western world and the Eastern Bloc alike. Some even argue that it played a role in the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989. As for the Israelis, they continued military actions until the United States imposed a ceasefire on both Israel and Syria. The strategic approach employed in Operation Mole Cricket 19, which involved simultaneously targeting SAM batteries and enemy aircraft, has been adopted multiple times in more recent conflicts. The lessons learned from Operation Mole Cricket 19 continue to be relevant to Israel's defense capabilities, just like the ability to neutralize enemy SAM systems and maintain air superiority remains crucial, particularly in the face of asymmetric warfare tactics used by terrorist groups.